What we're focusing on today is putting in the building with the red roof and a few boats and some of the details. And this is very impressionistic. So I wanted to jump on and do it live so that you can see my process for doing a painting like this. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to flip over to my work service and get started. The first thing I did was I used those colors and I did a couple little thumbnail sketches of the house just to see how the colors and the shadow colors would work together and to just get familiar with the shape of the house and where I wanted to place the windows and whatnot. So, and it's also a, way, a good way to warm up before you start diving right into your painting. So we're going to be painting in the, the structure with the red roof and I like to start with the with the roof itself because that is really the first thing that you see and it's going to determine how large the structure is and it's going to determine the perspective in the structure which way the the building is facing it just seems to work better when I get the roof in first and you can see in my painting that I left a little bit of a white area where I wanted to place this building to give me a platform to, to paint on. I'm just going to take the side of my brush and I'm going to put in the angle of the roof and the front of the roof and the back of the roof should be the same angle. So I'm going to just lay those lines in to give myself a um, a space to paint in and make sure that I've got those angles correct. They should match. The angle should match. The front of the roof is going to be a little bit larger in perspective. Not much because you're we're looking almost dead on on the side of the building, although it is angled a little bit. For um, more help with perspective there are plenty of YouTube videos on on you know you just Google YouTube and put in a perspective in watercolor YouTube and you'll come up with plenty of choices to uh, watch people do some pretty interesting studies in perspective drawing so once I get those angles in I'm going to put, and I want the bottom of the roof line to be fairly straight. I'm not so concerned about the top of the roof being straight because it falls into shadow and some of the trees overlap with it, which is fine. You actually want that to happen. You want a broken edge on the top and you want pretty much a solid edge on the bottom. And I'm going to just darken this whole structure up a little bit so that it really pops. Don't worry about getting it in. It's This is not an even wash. You want a little bit of variegation in the wash itself. So I'm going to put a little bit more pigment toward the bottom of the roof line because that's where our shadow is going to fall. And I noticed in the photograph that I'm using that the shadow on the opposite part of the roof over here is actually not, it doesn't show up as red, it's showing up in a shadow as a very, a very dark color. So I'm going to use some dark blue, some of that Mayan mixed with a little bit of the red to darken it up a little bit on this side because that really falls into shadow as well. And now that I have my roof line put in, I need to let that dry off before I put anything else on it because I do need some sharp, crisp lines on the interior angles of this, of this roof. So I'm going to let that go for the time being and come down and focus on where I'm going to place some boats. So I'm mixing up quite a bit more of this Mayan blue and I'm going to just put in a tiny bit of the red just to knock back the color a little bit. Remember we said that this is a very impressionistic style. So for the boats, I'm using a number four 
long round and this brush is actually a master's touch brush which is a Hobby Lobby brand and for inexpensive brushes you really can't beat these so we're going to be using a uh, an impressionistic style. I'm going to load that brush up and I may have to adjust the color so that's why I'm going to come over on my thumbnail on my practice paper which is watercolor paper and I'm going to just I'm going to be very careful not to put this in my wet paint on my painting but I want to practice a couple of strokes because these boats are going to be very loose Here's the bow of the boat. I want to get that line hard. And then I'm just going to sweep the brush across like that. And I actually like the color that I mixed, so I'll be keeping that. This is the cast shadow of the boat on the water. So I want to extend this line a little bit in the front and in the back of the boat. And then I'm going to wash my brush off, get a nice clean brush loaded with water. Now I'm going to be putting reflected light in the water from the boat. So um, sometimes I start from the, the aft end of the boat and uh, excuse if I get my nautical terms incorrect, it's I'm not an expert in that. And I'm going to push this clear water across just catching the edge and that one is just a, had a little too much water in the brush so let's try again load my brush up with the color that I'm using for the boat okay so here's the bow of the boat and I'm going to use my little Nike swipe there and the only thing is I need to make sure that the bottom of the boat is parallel to the horizon line so I need to clean that up just a little bit and then I'm going to take some of the paint off because I've got a pretty juicy brush here and I don't want to add any more pigment so now the shadow under the boat the cast shadow is the shadow of the boat right under the boat where it hits the water Okay, now this time I'm going to take a little more water off of my brush and just blot it on a paper towel. Okay, and I'm going to come underneath and just catch the edge. Okay, and it, you see it leaves a very abstract shape of a boat. I'm going to come up here the top and clean up the top edge of the boat so that it looks more like a boat let's get catch a little more of this and just adjust that shape a little bit and there you have a very impressionistic form of a boat and everyone's going to turn out differently because when you let the water and the watercolor do its own thing underneath here you really have no control over what shape you're going to get so then, you know, this is my practice sheet. So just to show you, at the end of the, after we get our boats put in, at the end, I'm going to put in some masts. So if I put in a mast on that boat, you see all of a sudden it turns into a really nice boat. So this is how we're going to proceed in the painting here. And I just need to mix up a little more pigment. Okay, so I have a little more pigment mixed up and what we look at, we want to make sure that we get in our mind what the size of the boat is going to be. So I'm looking at this boathouse, so I know that I need to keep the, um, the size or the scale pretty true. So I'm going to come in a little bit and I'm going to get my bow in and a nice want a nice size boat but not too overpowering okay 
adjust the shape a little bit. Okay, I kind of like how this, remember this is an impression of a boat. It's not a really a true rendering of the boat. Now my cast shadow. And it's okay if just part of it touches the boat, leave some white. That works pretty well. Now I'm going to soften that bottom edge so we can get a little reflection in the water. And I can even come down a little further and just make that reflection interesting. I'm washing off my brush and I'm just going to take a couple swipes across the reflection line and that will just show a little bit of movement in the water, not too much. And then we will let that dry off. For the next boat, I'll load up my brush again. I'm going to add a little bit more of that red. This is, you're going to barely notice the change in color. And I'm looking at my practice painting, and you can see that these boats are a lot more impressionistic than the ones that I'm doing here. These are a little tighter, so I want to match that. So let's not put them so close together. Let's try, let's try another one. just okay I like the way that came out okay just very impressionistic to just the shape in the bow but I think I'm gonna leave the rest of it very foggy there we go all right then our cast shadow on the bottom. And the reflected shadow in the water. Okay, and you can bring that down as far as you like. Uh, try not to go back in it's better if you leave it fresh one stroke and leave it. That's the beauty of watercolor. You don't want to keep um, going back in because then it will start to look a little overworked. And I'm thinking here that I may leave this with just two boats. It might start looking a little busy if I get too many boats in there. I'm thinking now about maybe putting some smaller boats like up in the yard. And in order to do that, because they're further away, they're going to look a lot grayer. So I'm going to mix up um, the complement to blue. If I look at my color wheel is orange so if I put some some orange and just get some gray and go back and just indicate some boat shapes in the boat yard here there's one and let's just Here's one, maybe that one is white. And just indicate little structures 
that will kind of pull things together. Cast shadows underneath. Even though these may be sitting on land, they're still going to get a cast shadow underneath. Okay, they're in the distance, so they are not very clearly defined like these are. And once we get our other details in that area, since this is our focal point, this is going to be the area where you have the most contrast between light and dark. So I'm trying not to, um, I'm not going to cover up very much of that white. I'm going to leave a lot of that white showing. And some of these, some of these masts will be dark and some of the masts will be actually almost white against that dark the dark trees in the background so we'll have some varying color on the masts and i think that's going to look really nice so while that's drying off i'm going to start putting in some windows on our house because i won't be disturbing any of the wet paint that i just laid down so these windows are um, very dark i'm going to start off by putting a little bit of a shadow underneath this roof line and what I've done is taken the color that I used on the roof and just darkened it up a little bit with some with some dark blue and that um, they, that way I know that I'm going to have color harmony so on my reference photo I can see that I have a very dark high rectangular window right under the eave here so i'm gonna put that in try not to fuss with it too much and then there is another elongated window right next to it okay so put that in right there and i think that this little window here is a little bit too large so I'm just going to take my paper towel and pick up some of that pigment just to lighten it up a little bit and I'm going to do the same thing with this one a little bit heavy-handed there all right much much better okay and then Let's come over to the other side of the of the house. And I'm just going to put a very broken line. So I've loaded my, this is a quarter inch flat. And I'm just going to take off some of the pigment because I want this to be a broken, dry line. Just here on the house very light and there's a door or some kind of a garage door opening here and just very lightly indicate all right and i want to take a little bit of a drier darker pigment of that same color and just put a little detail up toward the top corners to indicate that that is a doorway and I'm going to come in here and just a little reinforcement at the top of those windows Okay, you notice that this whole side of the house is blown out by the light, so you don't even see the edge of the house over there. And this will dry a little lighter, so it won't look so stark. So I'm not going to try to adjust that at all. I'm going to come up here and just put a little bit of a dark shadow at the top. just to give a little more shape to the building 
I'm going to wipe off a little more of that pigment and gradually fade it out. Give it a little bit on this side as well. Okay. And there's a little bit of a window on this side of the building as well. The vertical strokes on the doors and windows should be vertical to your paper. The challenge is that they don't get cockeyed. These should be straight up and down. Strokes on the sides um, they're the ones that are at an angle, but not the ones that come straight up and down like this one. And I'm going to soften that because I really don't want a hard edge on the back of that building either. And let me soften the inside edge. Of the doorway and we should be good to go. Okay, so there we have our boats and we have our building with the red roof. I'm taking a very almost clean brush, leaving just a little bit of the gray pigment in there. to show the shadow side of the building. Just give it a little more form. Okay, on the sunlit side, I'm gonna leave that. Okay, now this I just touched some pigment up at the top and I'm gonna let it blend out on its own and that will also reinforce um, where the edge of that wall is in the building. Okay, let watercolor have its way wherever you can and you'll be just so happy with the happy accidents that you get. Watercolor is such a beautiful medium. Let it do its thing. I'm at the point where I'm going to stop playing around with this before I end up with an overworked situation. And I'm just going to let this dry off just a little bit and then come back and put some foreground details in. Okay, so now what I need to do is put a few details in and just strengthen a little bit of this composition. Let's define the top of these boats a little bit. Let's darken up that top edge. Now I'm going to use a little bit of um, sepia and come down into this area of shallow water where there is some um, sticks and parts of trees that have broken the surface of the water. And I'm also going to show some grasses growing. So where the directional lines should be going toward the house. So everything that we're doing here is going to be pointing toward that house. We don't make it so obvious that it loses its effect, but we do want those grasses to point in the direction that you want the viewer's eye to travel. And we want to vary the height vary the color, you know, stay in the same color family, but it 
don't um, start making everything look alike. Keep it very feathery using just the point of your brush. Grasses tend to grow in clumps. Groupings of three work pretty well. I'm reinforcing the bottom. to show that it's in shadow, staying very loose. We're getting smaller as we get to the end of this little protrusion. And now I'm going to clean off my brush and just come in here and let the tip touch the color and pull down some reflections. Sweep across to show movement of the water. Don't overdo it. Sweeping across and you'll see that that, what, that uh, color will just come right on down. No hard edges here. May add just a little bit. Oh, that was a little too much. But let's see what watercolor does here. It, it could give us a happy accident. So I'm going to give it a minute and see. See what happens. I'm kind of liking that. All right, sweep across one way and then the other. Okay, do we get an interesting little shadow there? Reflection. Starting to get a hard edge, so I'm going to soften that up. No hard edges in the reflections. It's very soft. Okay, all right, I'm just going to test with the back of my hand and we, we're still a little bit damp, so let's hold off just, just for a minute. Okay, we're almost finished. I want to put a couple of sticks in the water in the front that are just kind of poking out a little bit. So we're going to, let's see, this first one is kind of going under the water right here and coming out here and put a little, a couple little branches. on the end there and to make this look like it's coming through the water I'm now going to take some of my Mayan blue I use sepia on the branch but now I'm going to use Mayan blue and just give a little shadow underneath and see how that 
by using the color of the water here. Makes it look like that branch is poking up out of the water. I'm just going to soften very, very little bit with a damp brush, damp clean brush, the underneath of that shadow. And see how it picks up some of the brown. It makes it look like it's coming right up out of the water. Do the same thing on the other side. And I'm going to soften that down. I kind of like how this brown fanned out here, but I'm going to taper off this little end of the shadow. Okay, and let's see, I'm going to take a darker mix and just change the shape just a little bit here and there and vary the color. That will make things pop. Alright, I'm not going to fuss with that anymore because it looks pretty good. And I'm going to think for a few minutes before I put anything else in. I might want to put one more little branch in, but I don't want to busy it up too much. That might be enough right there. And I think we're going to be dry enough now on the top to start putting in some masts. So I'm going to mix some sepia into the blue just to darken it up a little bit. Okay, and I find that what's easier sometimes is to turn the paper on the side because we're going to draw a mast and I'm going to use my shoulder. I'm not going to use my, I'm not moving my wrist. Okay, load the brush up about a medium. And let's see, how tall do we want these masts to be? I think for this boat, we're going to go to here. I want a little bit poking. It's good to exaggerate things a little bit when you're painting. It gives it just a little more of a painterly look. All right, so let's see. Now these don't need to be completely straight up and down. I want it to, let's see, let's have this one come in. A little bit. This will be the angle. All right. So we're aiming for this dot right here. Let's see how we do. We'll be about in the middle of the boat. Be careful you don't put your hand in, in what you just painted. And this one, we're going to come a little bit straighter. And not quite as tall. Okay, now I'm going to um, wash off my brush, make sure it's good and clean. And I have some Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. And I'm going to just mix that up all by itself in this little, little dish that I have here. And this is going to be pretty thick, but you want to make sure that you have enough water in the brush that 
you'll be able to pull a nice mast all the way up with these little boats here. All right, so you see how this these trees are all dark in here. So let's pull a white mast. Now this is going to be pretty short because this is a small boat in the distance. I'll turn my paper so I can get a better Okay. And we've got another one right here. Very, very thin white lines here. Okay, and this boat right here. Make sure you got your brush loaded up. We're going to just let that fade off at the top with this white. Okay, I like th I like that. How it's turning out. Try not to mess with it. <laughs> and I'm just gonna let that dry off and see if it needs anything else. This is the point where it's very easy to start overworking things. Don't be concerned about the um, accuracy of the rigging so much as what the painting needs. Okay, a couple of those diagonal lines really help. I'm actually going to throw in some white lines from the shore. They don't really make any sense, but it will help my painting, so I'm going to put them in. I could actually take a little light gray and throw in a couple more small boats right here. Don't worry if they overlap. It's an impression, it's not an exact rendering. Um, pick up a little bit at the end of that. I got a little overzealous, so now it's a shadow. No problem. And I'm going to wash my brush off, clean it, and just pull down a shadow by barely touching that boat and just one of them because I want to leave some light under the other one for contrast and I actually I like the looseness I'm trying to keep that loose feel going in this painting all right so now I want to put Maybe not so much on this one, but on this one, I'd like to see the um, boom with a sail on it. I'm debating on whether to make the sail blue or white, and I think I don't want to pull the eye over here too much, so I'm going to go ahead and and keep it blue, very dark, so we don't pull the eye too much away from the focal point. All right, so I'm going to just take my, my brush and very close to the boat. I'm just going to lay this brush down 
and the sail is going to climb up the boom just a little bit. There you have it. Got a little boom with a, a, a furled a furled sail, I guess is what you would call it. <laughs> Don't hold me to that. Okay. Now this one, I'm not going to put the sail on because this boat, at first glance, it looks like a sail, but, and then when you start looking at it, it's like, oh, well, that's a boat in the background. So you don't want those two things competing, so I'm going to leave the sail off of that one. And I think... Other than maybe coming back, looking at it for a couple of days, and maybe strengthening the trunks of some of those trees, I think pretty much this painting is done. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for hanging out and just watching the technique for putting in a building and some boats and a watercolor painting. Let's see if I can show you. Uh, more of a close-up with some of these strokes. And there it is. Well, Happy New Year, everybody, and until next time, happy painting.